What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Vintech, the show that takes way too long for every episode to come out. But here I am. Uh, let's get started. So, um, I uh, don't have a face cam going today. I'm stuck on the old MacBook, and uh, the 720p webcam does not particularly look great in this lighting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it off this time. You're welcome. Um, uh, so let's uh, let's let's dive into what we're going to talk about today. So um, a while back there was a trend where people, instead of installing Arch Linux by hand, I guess uh, they would get something like ArchBang uh, and they would install it and then customize it to get a functional Arch desktop without having to go through the hassle. Uh, Manjaro was kind of the big success story that came out of that. They did the same thing. Uh, customized some stuff. They're not technically Arch anymore, um, but they're still they're still based on Arch. So that's you know they're the big su success story out of that vein of of thinking. And Tergus went pretty well. Um, and a big one was Architect. Uh, that one was interesting because it really was just a straight up uh, Arch build, but it was an Arch build with a GUI installer. Um, and that was a big deal. But as far as I know, unfortunately, Architect is no longer um, doing that. I don't think they're actively supported, or if they are, uh, it, it's definitely flown under my radar. I googled it the other day, uh, and I couldn't find anything on it. So my guess is that they're, I don't think they're being supported anymore, which is unfortunate because that really did fit, uh, it filled the need. I used it a, a few times. Um, Another one was, uh, I, I, I checked out ArchBang and I couldn't find it. I'm not sure if maybe my Google search skills just suck or or what the deal is, but uh, I don't think ArchBang is uh, a, a thing anymore. I don't think it's being actively supported anymore. Um, so I went kind of on the hunt for something that would fill this gap, and I did find something. I found Anarchy Linux. Now, uh... This appears to basically be the exact same thing as what, uh, uh, as what, uh, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> um, Architect was. Um, you can see here, Anarchy replaces Arch everywhere, um, so it's just this, it's a, it's basically just a straight up Arch Linux um, obviously, it's not supported by Arch, and none of the, I don't believe any of the Arch-based um, distros are technically supported by Arch, so it's, you know, it, it, take that with a grain of salt, it's not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, so this is, yeah, providing you a platform to install a custom Arch based on an operating system, yada, 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 good stuff, good stuff. Um, <coughs> excuse me, so uh, today's episode is going to be primarily focused on installing uh, this Ar Anarchy Linux. Uh, and it should be uh, the exact same process uh, between the way I do it and the way you do it. So I'm going to do it in VirtualBox, and I'm also going to include how I get it to run in VirtualBox, because uh, I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually done that yet. So uh, this is going to be kind of a two-part uh, I, I, well, three-part video series. One is going to be the installation, and the other is going to be um, the actual review of the of the distro, but uh, the first two parts are going to be uh, the way that I install things on VirtualBox, and then you can actually use that information and apply it to install it on a desktop by burning the ISO image to a CD or flashing it to uh, a flash drive, and then booting it that way and installing it the normal way. So um, let's let's dive right into that. So. <clears throat> First thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is get VirtualBox installed. Um, I know VMware Player is a really good piece of software that works pretty much the same way. Uh, a lot of this stuff will apply. It's not going to be in the same place, but the settings will probably be pretty similar. Uh, the only issue with that is it does not run, I believe, uh, it doesn't run on Mac, and it doesn't particularly like some of the graphics drivers. Um, so I have, obviously, this MacBook Pro has the high density, the high pixel density display. 
and uh, it does not like extending that image all the way up to each corner. It basically maxes out at like three quarters resolution, and then it's just this little box in the middle of my screen. So uh, <clears throat> I, I've stuck with with VirtualBox. It doesn't quite run the the software as well, but with something like this, this arch based thing, it's probably not going to be that big a deal. So. Um, so we're going to hit new here and it's going to ask about the name and the different and the, what type of operating system it is. Um, so I'm going to do anarchy and it, it's it's kind of funny because it basically it detects this word and it knows what you're doing. So that's that's kind of nice. <clears throat> but just make sure this is a Linux distro and you do want the 64-bit version of Arch Linux. Um, recommended memory size. This is going to be open for interpretation. It really depends on how much RAM your computer has. Um, mine has 16 gigs, so I'm going to give it 8 gigs of RAM. You could comfortably run this with 4, I think. Um, you could probably comfortably run it with 2, just because it is Arch. It's very lightweight, so um, this is going to be up to you, but I'm going to give it 8. Uh, create virtual hard disk. That's what you're going to want to do. It's going to give you a recommended size. It's You can ignore that for the most part. It's not really that that big of a deal. Um, this is another thing here, the VirtualBox disk, disk image versus a virtual uh, hard disk versus, versus a virtual machine disk. These are just different file types, the same thing, and since I'm just using VirtualBox, I'm just going to pick that one. So um, it's going to ask you if you want a, a dynamically allocated or a fixed size. I do dynamically allocated because it doesn't uh, use up the storage on your hard drive until it needs it. So um, you can actually have a much smaller virtual hard drive uh, on your system to run the, uh, the client uh, OS uh, without taking up a whole lot of space until that, that OS, the, the guest OS, becomes larger and you install more things, then it will slowly take up space as it needs it. So, uh, so this says 8 gigs. I'm going to bump that up to... Probably 12, just to be safe. Um, I'll do a 15, just to be safe. I like to give this... Normally, if it's like an Ubuntu distro or anything that runs a GNOME desktop, I really do like to have it be uh, like a 20 gigabyte size, but uh, this is... <laughs> in case you were wondering, this bad boy does not have a whole lot of space. I got 26 gigs available on the Macintosh side. I got Windows running for a couple of games that's completely full, so uh, I'm just going to give that 15. And uh, so th we could technically here just add the ISO image and boot it, but uh, there are a couple of things that I'd like to do to make it run better first. So this, this bit here, um, when we hit settings, you got all these guys up here uh, that are the different categories that you can go into. This is obviously what we set up earlier, that's fine. Going into system, uh, you can determine how much RAM uh, you want. If you decide you want a different amount, this is where you would find that. Uh, everything else here should be good. I like to go into the processor thing. So I've got a quad-core i7 processor in this laptop uh, that's hyper-threaded up to eight cores. So I can actually give it four of my cores and still run just fine. So I'm going to give it four cores. Dual core is plenty. Um, so if you can, I would recommend doing that. And I always click this just in case. This is not necessary as far as I know, uh, uh, unless you're running a 32-bit, uh, a um, like a 32-bit operating system that is capable of handling more than two gigs of RAM or something like that. I, I have not paid too much attention, but I remember back in the day I ran into an issue where this was unchecked. So uh, I just check it every time just to be sure. Um, in the display, crank the video memory as high as it will go. Seriously, it will make that much of a difference. Um, and, and it's just that's my advice to you. Is uh, 128 megabytes is not even enough to, to run these uh, really particularly well. So I would much prefer this one up higher, but it does not. So, um, and then of course, be absolutely sure to enable the 3D acceleration. This will let you have. Um, your animations and gnome and things like that so that's important to have also um, on my particular system I have the high DPI screen I have the retina display and if I was gonna do it just for me I would probably mess with this I would probably turn it on and, and 
you know, mess with the settings until it looked right, but this is, obviously this is for you guys, so uh, I'm gonna leave it the way it is, just so that it kinda, it, it will, it will scale everything automatically, and it will just, it'll look fine, uh, it just won't be quite as crisp, so. Um, this right here is when we actually add the ISO image, so you go to the storage tab, and where it says empty here, this is the controller, um, where it says empty, you're gonna go over here to optical drive, and make sure this IDE secondary master thing. Um, and right here, if you click this, you can choose which file uh, you're going to use to boot from. Now this file is the one that you would burn to a CD or a DVD or flash to a flash drive and then boot from uh, if you were doing this on actual hardware. So you choose the virtual disk file, you got these downloads. Um, so let me do... Download, sort by, date added, anarchy, and that right there is that. So we have uh, this placed correctly, um, so this should be good to boot just the way it is. The rest of this is all fine the way it is, I wouldn't mess with it. Um, unless you want to mess with the user interface a little bit, you can, but I'm, I don't want to, I'm going to leave it. Um, and that'll save that, and that should be, <coughs> excuse me, that should be enough to get the system to boot, if nothing else, in live mode. So, um, this part right here is where people who are installing it on hardware, uh, will, will want to start this video. So, um, I'm going to click start. This little window is going to pop up. I always like to click view and enter full screen mode. Um, so now it should automatically capture the keyboard and the mouse. So I get the, these different options here. I can test the memory. This is this is all very standard of, of the different Linux distros, uh, you know, that you install. So, um, so I'm going to click Boot Anarchy, and that's gonna uh, that should boot me into the live uh, instance of Anarchy and allow me to uh, install Arch Linux from there. So we'll give this a little bit of time to run through the. <coughs> the boot process here um, and I don't know exactly how long this is gonna take because I didn't I didn't go through this process that you, you are experiencing this with me so all right okay that looked a nice little splash screen that was kind of cool um, little ASCII photo okay okay so this looks to be XFCE potentially uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, this is this is definitely XFCE, so that's kind of nice. Um, we've got it set up. Eh, not bad at all. We've got it set up kind of like a, a, a GNOME 2 looking thing, so if I click that, yep. Yeah. So this looks like GNOME 2 or Mate back in the... I guess I can't, yeah, I can't call it GNOME 2 anymore. It's not really relevant anymore. Mate replaced it, so... Um, but yeah, this looks very uh, interesting. It's a little... It's a little in your face, but other than that, I don't really see much of an issue. So, um, I guess right here we have the install, uh, the installer, so we'll run. Okay, so this is what they meant by, on their website they mentioned how there was a semi-GUI way to do this. So this is technically in the terminal, uh, but it's in a terminal, but it's not, um, you don't have to type anything. So, I'm just going to select our language here, English. Would you like to begin the install process? Yes, I would. <clears throat> okay, okay. So this is, um, the mirror list is uh, different. It's a list of servers where you can download the, the OS files from. So, uh, this is kind of nice. What it's going to do here is it's going to download all the, the information from the mirrors and it's going to rank them from the fastest to the slowest. So, I'm going to click that. And then my country code. So this is tricky because I'm currently in Ireland studying abroad. Um, I, I probably should do that because it's looking for mirrors. So I'm going to click that one and let it kind of determine. Uh, okay, yeah, so key map, yeah, United States. That was pretty quick, actually. Uh, my desired locale would be... Um, probably Great Britain, because of where I'm at, but 
you know what I'll just I'll just leave it with the United States the time zone that's what I want <clears throat> Alright, let's go back to... Oh, okay, Europe. I see. Isle of Man, Istanbul. Do they really not have Ireland on here, or am I just blind? I could just be blind. I'm probably just skipping right over. This is in Europe. Yes? Oh, Dublin is what they're giving me. Okay, Dublin, yeah. That's close enough. Okay, so this is... Um, this gives you an option. You can either automatically partition the drive to install. Uh, that's obviously the easiest way to do it. Um, this will encrypt the drive during the auto uh, partitioning, and then you can obviously do it yourself if you want to. So this is very similar to a lot of the GUI options out there. So um, we'll do the auto partition, 15 gig. That's what I gave it. That's the one. Uh, so I'm gonna just hit OK. Um, selecting the file type. I like ext4. A lot of people are starting to like this ButterFS system. Um, I don't. It seems a little confusing to me, but maybe that's just me. I like good old-fashioned ext4, so I'm going to use that. Um, do I want to create a swap space? Sure. Why not? There's not any reason to have it, but why not? I'll just give it 512. The swap space usually... Um, it's just for systems that don't have a whole lot of memory. If they don't have enough RAM, it can uh, throw stuff into the swap space and then remove it from the RAM and then throw whatever's in the swap space back on the RAM. And it's, it slows down the computer if you need to use it, but in theory, you sh really shouldn't need to use it. If you're, uh, unless you're really running an older computer, if you have four gigs running this, you're probably fine. Eight gigs for sure, you're fine. Um, do you want the GUID partition table? Yes, I do. Uh, and this is just giving me the option to cancel or opt out before I do it. Uh, and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to write the changes. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so this is now going through the process of partitioning the drive. And uh, it's going through the installation. So select your desired install option. Quick install, select Anarchy Desktop or Anarchy Server. Advanced, click Anarchy Advanced. Okay, so, um, oh, okay, so this is kind of nice. I don't know how this would work because of, because Arch is rolling, but, uh, it's probably the LTS kernel. Um, so we got the Anarchy Desktop, the Anarchy Desktop LTS with the, with the long-term support kernel, which is a little bit more stable probably, and then Server, Server, and then Advanced. So, um, I'm going to just hit Anarchy Desktop because I like the rolling release. I like the bleeding edge. Uh, if you're a little bit more cautious, you could probably do the same. Just, just go with LTS. and the, the, I'm sure the installation process from here is going to be the same. It's just that it's going to install things a little bit differently. So I'm going to go there and pick that one. Okay, so it gives me different options. I can either get... Now, this is nice. Um, the Budgie Desktop has come a long way. Um... Uh, I do have a video up on my channel of a review of Solus Project, and that is incredibly coherent in terms of the theming, the feel of it. It's very quick, it's very clean, it's very nice. Um, so uh, that would be a great option. But because this is Arch, I really like my Arch distros to be XFCE, so I'm going to... Um, <clears throat> Skip past all of these. Cinnamon is great. Gnome is great. Openbox is weird. Um, it's it's good. I mean, it, it, it can be a little bit confusing, obviously, for for uh, newer users. It's it's a little bit more of a hassle, but it's good. It's very lightweight if you want that. But I'm gonna stick with XFCE for so I'm gonna click that one. So my system host name. <clears throat> so let's just type in VBox because that's where it is. It's in the virtual machine. Uh, new login password for the okay, so set a root password. Set that. Set my root password again. And you can add. Okay, so that's the root user. And now I can add. Okay, so I can add <clears throat> myself. In here as well, so it, it it automatically gives you the root user, and you have to add yourself. It looks like so that's that's fine. 
So I'm gonna add myself there. My full name. I'll just do that instead. And then set the password. Same as the root password. I know that's not a good idea, but I do it anyway. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so that's kind of nice. Yes, I would like to enable sudo permissions. That gives me the option to go into uh, do administrative things. Uh, it gives me access to the sudo command, which is, which is handy. So um, that's all I want to set up there. If I wanted to add more people, if this was going to be like a family computer, um, I could add, you know, my sister or my mom or my dad. I could add these different people on here. Um, but I'm not going to do that because we're just doing it for the uh, purposes of this video. So, <laughs> install some common software. Yes, why not? So, okay, so I can, I can select different things. Okay, so I can add custom anarchy. Okay, do I want to add it? Yes, I do. Um, Android SDK, I don't need that. ArchWiki, well, that'd be kind of nice. Add that. Wait, what's happening? Okay, yeah. Yes, I do want to add that to install list. Okay, so some of these is going to have to go fetch things, and then it will allow me to... Okay, I see how this is. So... Linux games, I'm okay with that. No graphics. Internet software. You can click, okay, Chromium, Firefox. I'm going to pick Firefox. Personally, I like Firefox better. Are you sure you don't want any software? You no, know, I do. You, oh, use the space bar to check it on check. I'm an idiot. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's get Chromium. Let's get Firefox. These are good. Thunderbird, Transmission. Um... You don't need these really, but uh, it, you know you can't go wrong. It's not anything bad necessarily. So. And then it'll go in there and it'll stick that in my list of things to install. So that's kind of nice. This is a, this would definitely be more tricky for someone who wasn't sure how to use Linux or wasn't familiar with um, using the keyboard for things. Because obviously, I don't think you can just click stuff. Yeah. You, oh, you can. Huh. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if I would, doesn't feel like it's all that quick to do, but you could. Um, <coughs> let's check out the multimedia stuff. Handbrake, that's a really useful tool. Caden Live is a huge one, like, it is the video editor, so, um, if you want to do some video editing on, on Linux, that's pretty much the one you do. I, I'm not going to do it now, obviously, I've got Final Cut that I can use, but... Um, you could do it if you wanted to. Media player, you're gonna want that. Um, the multimedia codex, you're gonna want that. Simple screen recorder is always fun. Uh, VLC is always fun, and that's all I want for that. And install the software. Uh, it's gonna ask me if I want it. Yep, I do. And I think this will be. I'll stick uh, a couple more things on here and then we'll move on because I do not want to spend that much time uh, doing this. So Abbey Word is a great, great word processor. Uh, so I'm going to use that. I'm not going to install LibreOffice because it would take longer. But um, you could here install LibreOffice and uh, you would have the full Office suite. And uh, the, the nice thing about this is honestly is that so far this is all you selecting the software so this really is just a true clean uh, Arch Linux install so this is definitely something uh, that I would recommend people do if they want an Arch install but don't want to go through the hassle of dealing with the command um, the command line the whole time so let's uh, get a terminal going here and I believe one will come with XFCE but uh, maybe not so we have the option to add that, and uh, Yaquake is good. I like that the drop-down terminal. I prefer the XFC, the regular XFCE terminal drop-down that you can make. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. We'll just stick with that, and we'll add that to the list. And then the last thing, uh, one of the last things we'll do, Gedit <clears throat> is a very good text editor. So we'll just use Gedit. 
Obviously, you could get mouse. Pa uh, actually, you know what? We're using XFCE. I'll get mouse pad. And you can add Vim uh, if you want to. A lot of people like Vim. Uh, it's a pain in the butt to me, so I'm gonna ignore it. But uh, if you wanted it, it's there. This is this seems to be a very very comprehensive uh, installer. There's a lot of options. Yep. So bleach bit deletes unneeded files. That's always good to have. Um, the graphical calculator, good, good, good. Uh, G parted is awesome. Uh, and you can obviously, if at any time, go ahead and pause the video and uh, take a look at what some of this stuff does because it, obviously it would just take too long for me to install uh, to explain what all these things do. But uh, they are they are all good. So. Um, K3B DVD writing. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that. I'm not gonna need that, but uh, it would be a good thing for people to get. <clears throat> and uh, that's probably all we need from the utilities. Add those things, and then we'll we'll call that good. We're done. So it looks like it is going to update Pac-Man. Do I want to install the Arch Linux-based system onto my? Our drive I do. So we're gonna hit install. And this is gonna go through this process and it's probably gonna take a good little bit of time. Um, so what I will probably do is uh, cut the audio here and uh, do a little video magic and we will speed you through this process uh, so that you don't have to wait here like I do. <laughs> I will see you guys when it's done. Alright, so it looks like the installation has completed, um, <clears throat> so we're being asked now what we would like to do. Um, so this is kind of interesting, you could either, you could CH root into the installed system, there's no reason for me to want to do that right now, but um, I, I just really like that they give you all these options. You can install additional software, of course we can do that at any time when we reboot the system. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to hit reboot and it should back us out of VirtualBox and boot right back up. Now let's just see what happens. So we are rebooting. Of course it looks like it failed to unmount. Uh, yeah, so it looks like it, it did fail to unmount the, um, the, the installation media, which is fine. Uh, on most machines it will probably try and spit the, the disk out because obviously there is no real disk. It, it isn't going to try and eject it, and it's not going to successfully uh, eject it, so. Um, boot existing OS, that's the one uh, we we're going to pick here because obviously we now are installed. We don't need to boot the installer again. Yep, so we do have, it looks like this is just plain old Arch Linux, so we want to boot into Arch. And it should boot us into a naked vanilla XFCE oh that's interesting okay so it looks like we have this is off-center I don't know why that is um, XFCE that's what we installed we got the date and time okay yeah I mean uh, the background is still a little iffy uh, you could definitely change that later on but <clears throat> let's just see what happens when we boot in there I'm curious to see if it'll look like Okay, so it does. That's interesting. It when you select the XFCE desktop, it is their version of the XFCE desktop. It is not just the clean uh, installation, which uh, I mean, fine, good for them, I guess. You could you could obviously customize this uh, to not make it look the way that it looks. No offense, Anarchy. I. I Obviously, you were going for a theme. I just personally don't think I buy into it, but that's that's just my own opinion. Um, looks like we have the the whisker menu up here. Yeah, so that 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 seems to be it. Uh, that 
that's the installation process at this point um, if you were installing it on hardware it would obviously run quite a bit uh, better than it does here you can obviously see I'm skipping all kinds of frames here um, partially because I'm recording the screen and partially because this thing I don't think it has the the uh, VirtualBox guest editions installed yet but uh, we'll get all that sorted out later uh, for now that has been it the installation process of anarchy and I hope to see you during the review thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time